Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here, founder of UArtsy. I want to talk to you today really quickly about dynamic subdivision. It's a real straightforward feature, or so you would think, but there's a couple of really cool things that would be really great to know about it. So dynamic subdivision, it exists over here in the geometry tab, and we use it mostly when we do hard surface. So here's a model that I was working with earlier today just creating a, a gun using ZModeler and, and a couple of tricks so make sure you check out the ZModeler tutorial to see how I went about this process and uh, if we press con uh, if we look at the polyframe basically you can see that there's a lot of this geometry a lot of added in geometry and a lot of smooth beveling that's happening here and a lot of edge loops and things like that I'm, I don't work with it in this fashion this is the result of dynamic subdivision levels so that when I look at it from a distance like this I have some real nice clean metallic but like welded metal qualities you know right now even I could go in with let's say a blob brush and uh, let's put a little alpha in there like that hard alpha we can create some welded seams um, let's turn symmetry off you know something like that Although we could divide this more to get a cleaner, cleaner weld. There, nice. Reads real well from a distance, right? But the process of getting this kind of beveled quality is what we want to talk about. So let's take a look at a version of the model that's not been beveled, but it does have dynamic subdivision levels. So dynamic subdivision levels right here. And again, it's a hard surface thing. So let me just turn it off and turn polyframe on and you can see quite basic right and so let's look down the edge of this a little bit let's look like about through that so we can start to get a sense of what is actually happening I'm gonna turn dynamic on and by default that Q should Q grid should be set to zero and it should look about like this this is effectively the same as dividing the model. In fact, let's turn dynamic off and divide the model. Huh. They look the same, right? Let's just completely 100% be certain about that. I'm going to undo it and turn dynamic on. They look about the same. You know, they've been divided a different amount because of this su smooth subdivision level. So there, I set it by one subdivision, they look the same. If you wanted this, you might as well just divide, right? The power of dynamic subdivision level is when we start to increase this grid. So let's just set this to 1, and now suddenly something else happens. Number 1, we get bevel, chamfer, and this coverage. Real quick, the easiest and first one to explain is coverage. Because if you increase coverage, then it's increasing the effect. It's essentially what we know is that dynamic subdivision levels are looking at edges right it's looking for anywhere that there is an edge where the form turns in some dramatic way so right where I'm painting my red lines this is what dynamic subdivision levels or dynamic subdivision is looking at so then there's going to be a range of effect so this is ground zero this green dot and then there'll be a range of effect spiraling out somewhere like that you can imagine mathematically what this green dot would be is the center of a sphere and that center of a sphere will intersect the line in a certain way and give you a sense of how you can how much curvature you're going to have so the more coverage the further out the effect is until we get here where the effect is just whew, whew, moving in a lot of ways to the point where it's kind of now become obsolete it's kind of moved off to the side yeah now keep in mind in some cases I have put extra edge loops in so watch how those behave because you might have noticed this white line stayed a little hard right well look there's an edge loop right there whereas in this area it's much cl you know much less dense so there's a lot more smoothing that's happening there but even when you do this it doesn't smooth it out horribly you don't lose a ton of form just because there's nothing there and so in this case we want this coverage it's up to you but 
I'd like this coverage to be just a little bit of, a little bit, just to indicate a little bit of the um, beveling that would happen in a natural object, because obviously, totally flat does not exist in the real world, especially in machined things. But now, what's the difference between bevel and chamfer? Of course, somebody who's been into polygon modeling for a while is going to know this. But let's just take a quick look and see if we can look down the side of something. So let's turn bevel off and chamfer on. And let's turn smooth off and see if we can't get some flat subdivision in, in there. Increase our coverage. And just compare. Take a visual. You can see bevel is creating a bit of a harder edge in this instance. Bevel is taking a harder edge. It means all these extra little points in there, it's just taking a harder edge. Chamfer takes that same hard edge, but then it just softens it. So it'll take a line, and then it'll say, hey, let's just soften that line a little. What do you think, guys? Let's make it a little bit nicer. And the amount of chamfer, you know, the, the effect of it all, you still cover with coverage. You still affect with coverage. Now, you can have both of these on, and that'll take the chamfer down a notch. So it's kind of like, here's a bevel, here's a chamfer, and then there's a chamfer with bevel to an extent. The subdivisions really work. You can do the same thing like when we come into geometry, we will subdivide this. We'll, um, we'll turn smooth off for the first, and then we'll, that would be a flat subdivision, and then we'll smooth subdivide the rest. But we don't really need to do that because this does a really good job of making this work. So why don't we just set this to 2, and then what I want to do is show you, first off, let's just take a snapshot of the topology. Uh, let's do the inside here because we're going to have to do a mirror of it. So we're going to take Shift F and sh Shift S. Okay. And then we come over here. Let's turn our dynamic on and then let's just click Apply. And look at what it does. Again, I'm going to undo, redo. Undo, redo. Undo, turn polyframe off. Okay. It looks exactly the same when you apply it, but it has increased the geometry count. So if I hover over this, you can see the polygon is 415,000. If I undo, 28,000. Not even 28,000, it's 2,800. It's 3,000 polygons. Wind, suddenly, to 400,000. <laughs> Obviously, quite a bit, but when you're working with a prop like this, do you really care at this level? In some games you might, but you'll also be eventually decimating this down. And not only that, but we want to eventually take advantage of insert multi-mesh, and then we want some fine lines. So we want some clean sculpting in certain areas if you have to put an insignia and alpha. So you need a lot of polygons to really make that work. But at the end of the day, this really cool small little feature here makes it possible for us to simulate what this is going to look like as a high-res model much clearer than, say, for example, Smooth by Proxy used to do. So now the last thing for us to look at, because who would have thought we'd have spent 10 minutes on dynamic subdivision level? The last thing for us to look at is this Q grid. And the best way to look at Q grid is not in wireframe mode, because it doesn't really affect that very much. Let's turn polyframe off. Okay. And let's just set this Q grid to zero. So that immediately smooths everything out. And though if we set it to one, then okay, we can see it starts to push it and retain much more of the harder edge. So to really see the extreme, we go from zero to ten. Again, zero to 10. What's the difference? Look at that, how hard that is. Look at how clean this edging is. So one lets us kind of work, 
you know, relatively real time. If you insert multi mesh while you have dynamic subdivision level on, then you know that's a little bit of a problem. But at one with smooth subdivision levels, it's great. It's fine. Love it. You can go to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It keeps going. Ten's not the highest. It's still going, and it's just pushing everything out to the hard surface more and more, effectively acting as a multiplier. You could, I could almost see it as a multiplier to what bevel and coverage and chamfer do. And so while bevel might take a line or chamfer might take a line and it might create this kind of edge, when you increase the grid, it's going to push that more and more and more into this really tight, really tight fine, w fine line to where this is really just a nice, beautiful, natural, machined, hard edge. Something that would go well with some kind of metal material. Like, let's see if one of these uh, works. Metal, metal, there you go. Or maybe key shot. Voila. So, that's a lot about a small little feature. But I hope it helped you. I hope it also helps in your uh, rendering process as you start to render in Keyshot because, you know, you don't have to, or render in ZBrush. You don't have to divide this. You can use dynamic and get this best preview render as well. Hope you enjoyed. Check out RyanKingsline.com to see everything I'm up to. Make sure you come over to URC and take my certificate class as soon as you can. Happy ZBrushing.